Morning, Sharon Danley here with Two Minute Tips. <clears throat> yeah, I've been very sick and away. Um, sorry about that, but I think I'm back on track. My cough has lessened greatly. I hope you're all well wherever you are on the planet. And with all the disasters and things that have been going on, oh, my heart goes out to you, sending prayers and uh, good energy and hope that things can return in your life uh, in a good way. Well, today's uh, uh, session, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to be talking about healthy beauty and confident aging because that's the new tagline that I've uh, put on this channel as in the last year or so. I think it speaks more realistically to what this channel has evolved to. And how we do that with simplicity, uh, strength, style, and grace. And of course, followed from that is going to be our, uh, our Q&A. So let's get right into it, shall we? Where are we here? Okay, so we're going to be talking about um, healthy beauty. What exactly is healthy beauty? Beauty inside and outside. What is it? Uh, how we dress or how we package the outside and feel and care for the inside of ourselves, both physically and mentally. It's all part of healthy beauty. And it's not about all kinds of products and all kinds of surgeries and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's beauty of the soul, beauty of our exterior, the best way we can put ourselves forward is what it's about. Um, and I'd like to, I'd like to uh, talk to you about this analogy I've used before about a cardboard box. No matter who you're trying to influence or what you're trying to do in the world, how you put yourself forward, it's very well documented that you will get more feedback or positive feedback or have make good influence with people by how you present yourself because you're judged within the first seven seconds of somebody seeing you. Now this analogy I've used before is about two boxes. One is cardboard and one is a velvet covered box. Now if you were presented two of these boxes, which one would you open first? That's right, most people would open the velvet-covered one. Why? Due to the perception of its content. We think of velvet blue-covered boxes with rings and jewelry or beautiful things in them. Now, that gets you the first, the, if you're trying to influence people, that gets you out of the chute at a good rate. However, what you've got inside is what's going to keep you going is what's going to continue to influence in a positive way. You see, you could have a diamond in the cardboard box and the velvet covered box could be hollow. So, beauty, external beauty, is only one aspect of how you present yourself. And what has that got to do with confident aging? Well, lots, because confidence Part of confidence, a cornerstone of confidence, is how we look and therefore how we feel, along with all the other things that we do to make ourselves the best. We've been propagandized to believe aging is something to be fought at all costs, haven't we? I mean, advertising, films, media, news, fashion magazines, oy vey, enough already. They're always telling us how we just don't quite make the grade. If we just had this surgery or bought this snake oil or had this lotion or this potion, all would be right with the world. And any critically thinking person knows this just isn't true. But you know what happens when we're in a relaxed mode? Have you ever noticed it when you're watching television or flipping through a magazine? When you're... Uh, how shall I say it, your boundaries have collapsed. When you're just relaxed and anything can go into you, that's how they get to you. It's when you're not vigilant about resisting this stuff that they get to you. 
So just being aware uh, can put you in a better place not to just take in what is said as a, you know, the way, the truth, and the light, so to speak. And here's an answer I gave to someone when we were talking about this a while ago. So I'm just going to read to you what I said to her. The easiest way to sell you what you don't need is to manufacture low self-esteem and then promise you a dream of youth or uh, uh, no wrinkles or you, you fill in the blank. Uh, if you just buy this snake oil or this lotion or this potion, the best thing we can do is not try to figure out why. Why waste our time? Because we know what it is. It's all about money. We need to reclaim our healthy self-esteem, don our best redesigned look, and walk with aplomb through life, putting our best foot, face, and frock forward. The best way to embrace your natural aging is to stop the propaganda that comes from those industries. Separate your needs from their constant dangling of wants that they're aiming for you to focus on all the time. That right there is a huge thing. So if you're kind of, you know, at that place, and we all go there at different passages in our life, excuse me, <coughs> still got some stuff going on here. Every now and again, at, at certain passages, it's time to redesign ourselves, to reaffirm who we are, where we're headed, and to redirect our journey forward to the place that we want to be. So, what's one of the cornerstones? It's simplicity. You know the old adage, keep it simple, stupid? I'd like to say, keep it simple, sweetie. Less truly is more. Because the more you have, the more you have to worry about and fret over. Whether it's money, things, whatever it is. So keeping your life streamlined takes pressure off. And when you take pressure off, you notice how you, you stand better. Your shoulders then go up because they're not holding the weight of your stuff down. And like learning any skill, you have to make the decision, commit, and practice. Um, once you get the skill of keeping yourself streamlined and your life and world around you streamlined, <coughs> excuse me, it's a lifetime skill. And you know, your wardrobe and makeup and all that sort of thing is all part of it. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I guess I'm not completely healed yet. Anyway, that's okay. Next is strength. Strength of character, strength of conviction, strength of integrity, and the value of journaling. Do you know, sometimes we think we have character or we have integrity or conviction or whatever, but we don't really know what we have until it's tested. Strength of character. Wow, that can be really tough sometimes. When you stand for something that you know in your heart of hearts is the right thing, there will be many who will try to box you down. But strength of character keeps you standing. The same as your strength of conviction. Those things kind of work in tandem. And integrity is all part of that, too. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to just have a sip of caffeine. The world's always better with a sip of caffeine, isn't it? Anyway, <coughs> with that, if you're not sure of where your integrity or conviction or strength of character is, this is where the value of journaling comes in. You could simply just write about what is your character? What do you stand for? What do you fall for? What do you stand against? What are you all about? Those are important things, and most people really don't know what they're all about. Many people, unfortunately, follow the leader. You know the term sheeple? Well, that happens because people oftentimes don't think. Well, what's this got to do with aging? It has a lot to do with aging. Aging with strength, style, and grace. 
is very hard to do if you don't know who you are, what your integrity, character, or convictions are. So that's where your journaling can really help you find out just who you are in some of these areas. Um, and, it, and, and again, when you're being tested is the best time to, to find that out. And let's suppose you have something in your, uh, in your convictions, let's say, that you, yeah, you're, not, you're not so sure about. Well, you can always change that. By writing in your journal or recording your journal, uh, either vocally or with uh, video or whatever way it is you you, you do it. Or as somebody told me, um, a Penny actually, about journaling with post-it notes. Make a, make a note about something and just put it in your journal, your post-it note journal. I think that's another great idea. There's lots of ways of doing that. So something to think about, but it's all part of of the aging process with strength, style, and grace. Now we're going to look at style. How do we represent ourselves? Ask yourself, how do you represent yourself? How, how, do, you, how do you put yourself out to people? <clears throat> do you need to redesign your current look? <coughs> Excuse me. Best beauty tips for your external packaging. Here it is. It's a streamlined approach. Some of you heard me say this before, but this is what it is. The cornerstones. Even skin tone. Even skin tone is huge, especially as you age, and especially around the eyes, sides of the mouth, sides of the nose. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Time for a lozenge, me thinks. And the upper lip, I've noticed, too, is something that's, uh, something that's, tends to be ignored. So the upper lip sides, <coughs> excuse me, guess I wasn't as well as I thought. <laughs> so even your skin tone. The second thing that's really important is lifting the circumference of your hair around your crown. This is it from temple right around to the other temple. This is your crown area here. This is the circumference of your crown. In one of my recent videos, I did a uh, on, um, and I'll post it here, modern day twist on the page boy. And I show you in that how backcombing, and I'm, I'm wearing pretty much that style today, how backcombing makes a difference. I have an egg-shaped head. I just do. That's the way it is. But it doesn't show up egg shape because I back home, I lift out the circumference here. Whether your hair is curly, straight, long, short, medium, the circumference of your hair being lifted is huge. Number three, brow and lip correction. As we age, things change. Our, and I'll use me as an example. This side of my mouth is much thinner than the other side. This brow sits a lot lower than the other side. So I correct those. They're not perfect, but they're, the symmetry comes back. It's not, it's not identical, and that's okay, but it comes back. It makes a difference. And the fourth thing is the strengthened lash line. Now, if you are white-skinned, and you have gray or white hair, and you're, you know, over 45, your lashes and your brows, in, in many cases, not all, will diminish in both texture and color. So what happens is you become very blah looking. And that's where uh, you have a multiple choices on how you want to attend it. You could say, I'm going to use uh, darker colored extensions in my hair, like pewter colored gray, to bring some contrast into the hair. Or, you know, you could strengthen your brows, strengthen your lashes, uh, and add false lashes like I do. I wear them all the time because they bring back the strength that I need for my, my eyes at this point. You've all seen, all seen how I look with no makeup. So those are the things that make, make it work for everybody. 
And you know, makeup at this stage when you're redefining it, and every five to seven years you're going to have to, you know, take another look and redesign for where your face is at that point. But learning your makeup is like trying a new recipe. Any new recipe, you have to follow it a few times before you feel comfortable with it, right? And then after a while, you just go on memory. And then in time, you add a little more of this or take away a little of that, and you adjust it to fit your palette. It's the same thing with makeup. Practice does make pretty good perfect. So that's the style portion. And of course, wardrobe in that, like I said earlier, keeping your wardrobe streamlined and making sure that it fits your body for where you are now and the lines and shapes you wear are, uh, are, are well suited to your current body frame. Not what used to be, but what is now. Keeping it simple, keeping it uh, simple in color and in style you will get far more use out of your wardrobe. And the focus will then be more on your face, your communication tools, your eyes, and your mouth. Okay, so the final uh, cornerstone in aging with strength, style, and grace is grace. What is grace? It can be different things for different people. But basically, it's kindness, forgiveness, love. And kindness, forgiveness, and love is truly a choice. It's a choice to be kind. It's a choice to love. It's a choice to forgive. Is it tough? Oh, you betcha. I, I, being a, a, a gracious or grace-filled person is not an easy road. However, it's, it's well worth traveling down that road. Well worth it. And grace doesn't mean being a doormat either. It doesn't mean collapsing your healthy boundaries and <clears throat> just letting everybody walk all over you. No. Grace <clears throat> with love and kindness in mind stands strong and firm to its integrity. Does that make sense? So, so healthy beauty and confident aging work in tandem. Putting all these healthy beauty and aging approaches together feeds your healthy and confident aging. And many studies have shown that when you present well, within the first seven seconds you are judged, like I said earlier, <clears throat> Is be, uh, you are judged as being more or less competent, more or less intelligent, and more or less a kind person that you may or may not want to be around. <clears throat> and that has to be to make a person feel good. And when you feel good, you do age differently and absolutely more confidently. Whether you're a junior, intermediate, or senior, senior, whether you're fully able-bodied or with restrictions, whether with lots of family or living alone, your attitude is your choice. So, thank you, ladies. I just want to give a shout-out to people who are online now. Kathy, good morning. Kathy Allen, so glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Penny, good morning. And Joan and Betty, uh, hello from South Louisiana. Um, Evelyn, food nor mong fro. Sorry, I don't understand. Rebecca Harvey, hello. Jan, I'm glad you are feeling better. I was worried about you. Oh, that's very sweet. PM Art, good morning. Uh, Cole Carey, hello from Illinois in the Bahamas. Hello. Uh, Marion Piper, good morning. Silver Dragonfly, hi from Kentucky. Wonderful. Susan Price, good afternoon from the UK. Hi, Susan. Jay Brown, good morning. Kathy Kitterman, good morning. And Deborah, thanks for always for making me feel 
about how to age confidently and gracefully. Well, you're welcome. You're absolutely welcome. <clears throat> Sorry, ladies, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just not feeling that great. Good morning, SD Toms. All right, so now we're going to switch over to questions. I have, um, let me see, uh, so, so uh, hi, Ren Renat from Germany. Make sure you put your questions up, and I'll, I'll, I'll put them up here, and we'll get at them. This is from Linda Cleopatra Douglas. Sharon, I'm from Scotland. What do you recommend for bags under the, R's, under the eyes? I'm far too frightened to go under the knife. Linda, I hear you. I absolutely hear you. And it's not necessary to go under the knife. Those that do, it's their choice for sure. My opinion, in, in my world... I think there's lots of things you can do with makeup to prevent that. Now, with bags. There's two kinds of bags, Linda. There's the kind that are puffy. You know, they're, they, they go out, you know what I mean? They're puffy. Those you want to make sure that they're the same color as your foundation. That's what I do. But usually, there is a trench underneath. That's where you highlight, and you highlight there and down in a triangle shape. So to bring this out a little more, and it counterbalances the puffiness of the eyes above. Okay? Now, I, I don't, I don't uh, go down that route of all kinds of concealers and things for the under eyes. When they, the propaganda gets you concentrating on your bags without any attention to your brow shape, your lip shape, the strength of your eyes, your even skin tone. Put, do all that stuff first, stand back, take a selfie, and reassess. We are made to feel that wrinkles and bags are the scourge of women. Oh, contraire, in my opinion. Now, the other type of bag is the sunken in bag here. Now, that's where you would put on a lighter color to help bring that forward because light does, you know, it, it uh, augments or brings forward. So what I would do if my bags were reversed, I would use the uh, foundation that's a shade or two lighter than what my normal foundation is. I would cover the bags with the lighter shade of foundation and then depending on whether I had a trench or not, I would carry it right into the trench. So I hope that that helps. There are other products and things. It's just not something. See, the thing is, talking about simplicity, why would you want to spend a half an hour doing your makeup every morning? I don't know about you gals, but that's not something that's on my agenda. And I'm retired. I could do it. Have no interest in doing that. I do have an interest in looking my best, but not focusing on bag. Okay, I'll get up real close. You've, you've seen my face before. Look at, I've got, look at the, all the wrinkles on my eyes. Above and below, that sort of thing. Look at the bags that I have. You know, the nasal labial folds. And then, of course, you can't see it, but my brow sits low and, you know, all kinds of things. But I'll tell you, this is, this is just fine for wherever, whatever I'm going to do, wherever I'm going to go. I am not going to look at wrinkles and bags as something to be, oh, to be concerned about because they're not. They're only maybe... 2% of what I am, not even 2% of my whole thing. That's, that's we, we, we have been uh, propagandized to believe there's something we need to, you know, get away from. Okay, let's see. Um, we have some other questions here, I think. Here's from Kathy Werner. There are some that haven't signed up yet, and you are unable to see them on here, Sharon. Okay, no, um, it's not the same for YouTube, Kathy, as it is for um, Facebook. On Facebook, you have to. On YouTube, you, sh you can just you can just make your you can just make your points. 
Okay, let's see. We have from Penny McLean here. Uh, I've used that tip, Sharon, and I think it works great. Ah, good. Thank you, Penny. Thank you. Um, let's see. Next, we have Jan. Sunken in bags. Are they what others call circles? Yes, it could be that, Jan. It could be that. So it takes a little bit of experimenting, you know, the light, the dark, the light, the dark, to figure out what it is. And this is where living in an age of selfies really, 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 really does help us to, uh, you know, to, to really study and improve ourselves just with simple selfies that we can, you know, once we finish them, we can throw them away. Uh, let me see. Silver Dragon Tears. Uh, I've wasted a lot of money on products for under eye bags. Did nothing. Thank you. Thank you for confirming. Yes, it really doesn't do anything, and it's not going to remove them. It's like, okay, here's an example of how you know that I, I recommend the Burrell dual finish powder, uh, and if you can't get that, you know, MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. I have a video, and I'll put it up here, of a woman who I did, Marcella, who has exanthalasma. And they are, what they are, are white cholesterol spots that many people get on their eyes. In fact, my darling Andrea had them. Now, they can be surgically removed, but oftentimes they come back again. I only used the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation and... It really camouflaged them beautifully. Did they disappear? Hell no. But they took away the red that was behind them, and it diminished them substantially. She said she'd never felt better. In fact, she had tears because she was so pleased with how it looked. So I'll put it up. And did I could have used... Derma Blend and all the other things that I have for, you know, removing tattoos or covering tattoos and that sort of thing. Women on the go or women enjoying their lives don't want to spend at least in at least from what I've seen don't want to spend all this time and and money on unnecessary makeup <coughs> <coughs> however we still want to look our best so thank you for that um let me see sd tong if the correct brow shape does not fit anywhere within your current brows, do you recommend plucking out all your original brows and microblading in the correct shape? A most excellent question, and thank you. I was going to put that question up afterwards, with, uh, but um, I, I don't need to now. In a word, yes. Now, what I recommend is when you get guidelines uh, from me is to remove a row of hair at a time when you're changing your eyebrow shape. Remove a row of hair. That's a very thin line, but it does make a difference. And fill in where there's bald spots in the guidelines, fill those in and remove one hair at a time. And, and do that and take a selfie. If you're on the Go and Gray page, put it up and do an assessment and see where you need to go next. Take it one hair at a time till you get to where you're going. And if it's still not working, if you're still unhappy, it's not quite the right shape, then yes, microblading can do wonders. Now, when it comes to microblading, you want to make sure that you pick the right artist. You want to do major research. You want to speak to their clients directly. You want to see a gallery of their work. You want them to understand if you're older and you have gray hair. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That they have, uh, what, are the, what are the colored inks? And will any of them turn a bluish color? Because you don't want blue coming through. You want, you know, um, it can make a huge difference. And microblading can be absolutely wonderful. But... Something to consider. As we age, our eyebrows drop or change or whatever. Some have it all happen in the front where they, you know, they, they, they go uh, low like this and they go up and arched like that. Some are higher at the front and they drop down at the back. Um, 
and some just drop completely. It you know everybody's a little bit different. So this is where some study and selfies and coaching to get it right is well worth it. Once you have that shape, um, it's it's magical. So first of all, tweeze or thread or whatever works for you. Take selfies, assess, get coaching. And if it still needs microblading, yes, do it, but make sure that you that you get you do all of the work necessary to make sure that you get a good artist. And on the Going Gray and Loving It Facebook page, I can give you the guidelines uh, that you can take to your microblading uh, artist and show them that this is the, the thing that you're aiming for. So I hope uh, that that answers your question um, uh, and and uh, and helps you out with that. If not continue to ask or if I've, if I've not been clear enough. Okay, Kathy. Um, let me see. We have Pam Art here. If there are bags under eyes, does it emphasize them if we use dark shadow under the eye? Well, you, you don't want to go any further down than your lashes, uh, uh, Pam Art. Um, all you want to do is go along the lash line, just and in the outer corner and blend into the center. That's that's what, m generally speaking, that's what most people uh, works best for them. So no, you don't want to bring it, and you don't want to use pencil. No pencil on the lower. Use eye shadow and a flat angled brush or a dome brush, a small brush that will help get that, um, help get that, uh, uh, in, in the right place for you, okay? Um, and, and, and if you're using gel liner, ladies, my recommendations are the Matte Fluid Line, Bobbi Brown, or Annabelle Gel Pencil. And you put that on the upper lash line. Make sure that it's dry before you close your eyes, you know, or blink. Make sure that it's dry. And if you want extra, just add a little bit of eyeshadow over top of it just to help seal it. Okay, so I hope that that answers your question okay. Uh, let me see. Kathy uh, asks, what eyeshadow color are you using on your lids? Um, on my lids here, on the actual lid, I'm just using a combination of my highlight foundation Yeah, that's all I'm using, actually. And I put, put my regular foundation on first, and then I use that as a highlight. Now, in the in the crease, I'm using a coquette dupe. That's all. I, I, I am going to do a video on colored eyeshadows um, because I think a lot of money is wasted on colored shadows. Uh, that that is it's really not necessary and it really doesn't do anything. In fact, I did a makeover of somebody who was using because she had blue eyes. She was using blue eyeshadow uh, uh, or or blue pencil as an eyeliner. I removed it all and just used the neutrals. Her eyes pop more with neutrals than they did with the blue eyeshadow. That's so that's that's coming up soon. Hope that answers your question, okay? Uh, Marianne Piper, what do you use as a foundation to even your skin? Uh, Marianne, I use the Burrell Dual Finish uh, Powder Foundation. And everything that I use or that's on the videos, I put in the description box below the video. So it's all there for you with every video that I put up. I, uh, I, I love that it's fast and it's easy. I can pack it on, I can put it on with a brush very lightly, I can put it on with a sponge and stipple it in, I can put it on with a brush and push it in, or I can use a dampened sponge for areas that I have, maybe a, you know, a breakout or whatever, and I can dampen the sponge and do that. Or Cindy uh, <clears throat> Pearson does this. She dampens a face cloth, wrings at it really tight, and then puts it on her face after she's put her powder on and just holds it there for a second, removes it, and that seems to set it for her. So she, there's, that, there's that approach too. I love it because 
if you have to do touch-ups and all makeup requires touch-ups, I don't care what they say, it's a whole lot easier to take, let's say something's collected in your lines, okay? So I have a Kleenex here and with my na nasal labial folds. Well, you can't, it doesn't, it hasn't happened, but if I were, you know, glistening as women do, because men sweat, women glisten, I would just do this if I was in a hurry. Now, if I had creams and, uh, uh, you know, concealers and all that stuff, you can't do that. You got to, like, really fix it up. I haven't got time for that. The other thing I've done is, let me pull this out for you because I've done a video on this before. And I find this the, the, the handiest thing I've ever created. This is a toothpick container. I carry both my toothpicks and... I took an eyeshadow pen, remove the eyeshadow. This is foundation, my powdered foundation that I put in there, mixed it with, uh, with uh, alcohol, because uh, that's how you repair um, powdered foundations and uh, eyeshadows and things of that nature. I have that flat little thing in my little handbag here. It sits, it's, look at how thin it is. So it just sits right there. And if I've been crying or it's been really hot or whatever, I put my clean finger or a Kleenex in it and just touch up. Good to go for another, another few hours. So that's why I love those products. Hope that helps you. <clears throat> okay, Louise B. 24-hour lipstick causes extreme lip drying for me. The lip gloss that comes with the product doesn't help. Do you have this problem as well? Well, Louise, there's a couple of things, and thanks for that. There's a couple of things. Some people that chemically, their bodies can't wear the Maybelline uh, long wear, but they love the Maybelline, I think it's called Ink. It's a matte long wear lipstick. And then there's also L'Oreal that is a uh, long wear lipstick. <coughs> but here's the trick. Here's something to really think about. <clears throat> if your lips are that dry, there's two things to consider. One, are you eating a lot of high water content food and hydrating yourself enough? If you're not, that's something to think about. Number two, use Vaseline on clean lips every night. And I guarantee you won't have any trouble. Now, uh, my sister has decided, um, given, given her situation, her job, and everything else, she because she, she designs what she's doing. Um, she knows what, she, what, what she's aiming for and how she wants to look for what she's doing. She's come to the conclusion that she's just going to put a little bit of Vaseline on her lips because she has brunette hair, so she doesn't have that um, loss of contrast between darker hair and skin. She does her eyebrows beautifully and her eye makeup great. So she can afford to go with a lighter colored lipstick. So the Vaseline, and sometimes she even puts a little bit of blush with it. You can, you can do that. You can, you know, powders, it can, you can mix the powder and Vaseline together. I mean, they've done that on the runway for years. So you can just put a little bit of blush. All kinds of things that you can do. But of course it doesn't stay. But in her circumstance, it's not necessary. <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, Louise, time for another lozenge. Try that with the Vaseline. And if they're very dry, do it, uh, do it for a, a week and do it in the morning as well. And the other thing is, put it on your cuticles. If you, you know, it'll soften your cuticles so that you'll never have hangnails or anything. So I hope that helps. And if not, let me know. Okay, uh, PMR, if we have bags under our eye, should we use liner under the eye or not? Does that emphasize the bag? I'm not sure. I think you mean should you use liner uh, on the outside, uh, on the outside corner. The only liner on your lower lash line that people should use is an eye shadow applied with a small dome or a flat angled brush just in the outside corner because it's the outside corner here as we age we want to bring the uh, the the 
shape of the eye back because as we age our eyes tend to become round. So you want to bring that back out here. It makes a huge difference on older women to do this. And then you just blend it across to the center. Blend, blend, blend. It's not going to have any effect on your on your bags at all. So I hope that helps answer your question. Let me see. Having trouble getting rid of it. There. Okay. Elaine, <clears throat> I just received Burrell number 40 to use under my eyes. It's a perfect match, not too light, and hides the darkness. Thanks for all your tips, uh, Sharon. Oh, you're so welcome, Elaine. Um, yes, and Elaine, my, my friends, she's worked very hard um, to um, eliminate or camouflage her the bags under her eyes, and I think she's done a, a great job, And it, but it's taken her a little time. A little bit of testing, a little bit of figuring, and now she's at the point where it's all going on, working great. Thanks for sharing that, Elaine. Ah, let me see. Silver Dragonfly. That's why I'm not a fan of eyeshadow palettes. So many colors I don't use. Exactly, Silver Dragonfly. Exactly. Um, it is the biggest waste of money that there is on the market. Remember I said streamlined? It, keep it simple. Keep it streamlined. Keep it easy. And I have, I think, another live stream um, and or video showing that, well, I can show you right here to make it easy. This is a very old Mac. They used to be professional palettes. And this is what I keep in my palette. This is my, where, okay, this is my foundation, this is my highlight foundation, and this is my contour uh, foundation. My blush, an eyeshadow I'm using as a blush, and a white, very slightly shimmery that I use to shimmer or shine anything. And here is a pink one that I haven't been using for some time. And here are my neutrals. Oh, having trouble finding. Oh, sorry, it's reversed. Notice my eyeshadow palette colors, pewter, dark gray, uh, 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 kind of a, a coquette, a brune, and a black. And that dark gray is like the print, and I can make it as dark or as light as I want. That very color of gray right here is what I use for my eyebrows. But I also, so, and I can make them very, very light or very dark. This is all I need, and that's all I've been using <clears throat> for some time as any one of those pans wears out I simply let me see I simply pop it out and replace it because it's a magnetized bottom so Mac sells these now these palettes and they have two or three different sizes now you can get them in quad packs where you can use just um, where you can use uh, just four eyeshadows. They're very handy. Just a small, tiny quad pack. Or with this, you open it. You have everything there. You're not opening, closing, opening, closing. Story. It's one thing. Does it all for you? So yeah, I'm all for that. Um, Penny McLean. Face cloth is a great idea. Sometimes I use a tiny bit of moisturizer and rub it on my fingers and tap gently. It works really great too. Ah, great. Thanks, Penny. Yeah, that's another that's another way of doing it. And you can also just use a spritz bottle and spritz your face or spritz up like they do with perfume and then walk under it. You know what I mean? And for those that um, aren't used to a powder foundation, you have to give it a good, oh, what should I say, 10 minutes for it to um, to kind of work. And you want to make sure you moisturize your face first. This is what's really important. Moisturize it, not with a serum, with a lotion type of moisturizer. Serums and all those sort of things should be reserved for the evening where they can really work on good, clean skin to give to, to do all the things that they do in the repair at night. But the daytime, you want a moisturizing lotion. So you put that on first, apply your stuff, and either 
If it's still a little bit powdery, either spritz, use the face cloth, uh, tap with moisturized fingers. You could also, if you don't want to use water, let's say you feel like you're really wrinkly or whatever, you can dip into a little bit of moisturizer. And I mean the, oh, like a, a, a pinhead's full. And just tap. Tap over top. That way, you're not removing the foundation, but you're just adding a little bit more moisturizer. There's all kinds of ways of doing this. All kinds of ways. So, well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So, well, wait a minute. Maybe we do. Um, yes, we do have one more question here from Kathy Kitterman. Um, do you use primer before Burrell? Well, no. Believe me, I've tried several. And I don't know. I just, for me, I don't see the point in it. It's an extra product. Now, for some people, they like it. Some people feel that it just does a better job. Great. I, I don't see the benefit in it myself. But that's getting kind of a, you know, that becomes a bit of a, of a personal thing, I think. See, I'm all about if you can get by with one less product, all the power to you. But for those that feel that it's really important for them, then that's, uh, then that's, then that's what you do. Let's see here. Penny McLean. I've saved so much money following your tips, and my makeup is so simplified and easy that I also have a ton of time. <laughs> Excellent. So glad to hear that, Penny. Yeah, a ton of time that you could be doing other things. And then once you get you, once we get our hairstyles the way we want, you know, you get you get like a, an extra half or three quarters of an hour a day where you could write the great novel that you've always wanted to do or whatever it is. But anyway, keeping it streamlined. And here's the thing. <coughs> <coughs> when you have a streamlined, simple approach, you've designed and are happy with your, uh, uh, with your look and you've practiced enough till it's well honed. You wear that in your constitution as an older person. It just oozes out of you. It adds to your confidence pot big time. You know, it's, uh, I, I, I know myself, like in this last six weeks, I've been really ill and I, you know, I haven't worn uh, makeup much because I'm not, I, I'm past the point of being ill, but a little bit of lip, you know, stuff would help. No, that I was really sick. I got to tell you, when I first put my makeup on, and this is the truth, I put some on on Thursday night because I finally went back to choir. I got to tell you, it took me a few minutes to, wait a minute, because six weeks took me a few minutes to just like, oh yeah, I forgot. I need to do this or angle that or do whatever, whatever, whatever. Seriously, if you don't use it, you lose it. You know that. And it's the same thing with makeup. So, um, you know, keeping it practiced and you don't have to wear the full barrage all the time. I wear, you know, my fullish makeup for videos and things of that nature because, you know, I'm trying to influence uh, in a healthy way. But if I'm just going across the street uh, to meet someone for coffee, maybe, I would make, I would do my brows a little bit thinner. I would do a lighter lipstick. I would still strengthen my lash line, but I might wear a mascara. But I'd still, I gotta tell you, I would still, even all my skin tone, even if I did nothing else but even my skin tone and lift the circumference of my hair and fix this one brow especially, that would be it. There's degrees of how you wear your makeup for whatever it is you're doing. The trick is having one package of makeup that serves all your needs whether it's just very light to a red gala event and anything in between whether you are wanting to influence a, an audience of 10,000 or your grandkids you know 
when it's simplified, when it's streamlined, when it's well honed, when it's well practiced, you can knock that off the list as that's a life skill you have for life that will always serve you well. And it absolutely does feed into aging with strength, aging with um, aplomb, uh, aging with confidence. Okay, let's see. Silver Dragon. I thought it was the only one that didn't see the point of that primer was. <laughs> well, yep, you're not alone. Uh, Eileen, um, thanks for your make betters. They are helpful to all of us. Oh, you're welcome, Eileen. I'm glad. I'm glad they are. I think they are. They're a good teaching tool, aren't they? Um, see Hensley, I've tried finding a hairpiece that works for me. I have bought it several places online, and nothing works. Do I need to get my hair dyed? Um, well, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, tried to find a hairpiece. Now, depends on what you want your hairpiece for. Do you want it like I use, a uh, temple to temple single weft extension? Do you want a hair scrunchie where you pull the hair all back and put it into a either a um, um, chignon at the back at the base of the neck or maybe a crown piece that you can use it for, or use a couple in the crown and slightly down. I'm not sure. Is it a topper that you need? Because many women do thin out. Um, and a topper is, the way they make them these days, ladies, is fantastic. I got to tell you, their synthetic heat-friendly fibers that they're using for toppers now is amazing. They're light. They're not like a full wig. They just sit on the top of your head from about here to here and just go back to the just below the back of the crown. But they help fill in and they are using, you know, monofilament tops. So it looks like your scalp. Wonderful stuff. So I'm not really sure what it is you need. But ah, here you have another uh, question here. So let's see. I've tried finding a hair piece. Of... Okay, no, sorry, that was the same question. So anyway, I, I hope that helps. I need to have a little bit more information on that. Um, okay, let we see we ha what you say here. I have strange colored gray hair. It is still light brown and darker brown mixed with two shades of blonde color than gray. At 67, I'm not wanting to dye my hair. Well, first of all, don't dye your hair. Secondly, is the blonde color coming from uh, old dyed hair? Is any of this uh, old dyed hair in any way, shape, or form? Gray, gray, with gray, you can get lighter gray, let's say. If you want to lighten up your hair, <clears throat> like, let me see if I can show you here. You've, for those that haven't seen it before, there's, there's my extension, okay? Now, I've got this one that matches my hair, but I also have them where they're darker, so that if I want to have a little bit more contrast in my hair, I put a darker one in and I get a darker look. So there's that approach. Depends on which way you want to go. If you, uh, um, What is the most predominant color of your gray? And then maybe get some extensions to match that uh, and, 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 and go from there. I, I hope that that helps. I'm not still not very sure if I'm getting your point, but uh, if I don't, just let me know. Patricia Hunter, keep inspiring us. It helps so many. I'll say a prayer for your complete recovery and continued health. Oh, well, thank you, Patricia. That's very kind and very appreciated. Uh, uh, C. Henley, um, a scrunchie. So it's a scrunchie you want? Okay, so you can buy scrunchies in various different colors. So maybe get two. One's a little darker, one's a little lighter, and then use the two together. Um, Patricia says, I love uh, silver white hair, but it's taking forever. I'm now 71 years old with long brown hair in great condition. Patricia, if that's what Ma Nature has decided for you. Ma Nature usually knows best when it comes to these things. However, you can help Ma Nature a little bit by 
getting, like I said, an extension to put in your hair to just blend in and give you some, you know, some, yeah, this isn't a good example because it's the same color as my hair, but you can put it in uh, a, something that's a little darker or a little lighter and it will, uh, it will give you some different shading and tones. Give that a try. Think about that and see if that will help. Um, Okay, Marianne Piper, can you give me some names of good uh, eye gel eyeliners? Annabelle Smoothline uh, Gel Pencils, I recommend. MAC Fluid Line Gel or Bobbi Brown Gel, I like. Those stay in place, they don't move around, uh, and, and they work very well. I hope that helps. Penny McLean, uh, you help so many women, Sharon, and selflessly share your expertise. Thank you so much. It makes a difference. Ah, thank you very much, Penny. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies, it looks like we're, uh, we're coming to the end. Now, if you haven't had your, your answer answered or your question answered here, or you're watching the playback afterwards, make sure you post your question and I'll be sure to answer it in the next live stream. Now, in the meantime, if you are looking for anything on my, my page, go to the search engine or the search bar that you see listed there, or you can go to the playlists. And once you click on the playlists, then they all come up and you can click whatever playlist you want. And I've categorized everything so that it, it you know, like hair extensions, all hair extensions are in the hair extension playlist and so forth. So I hope that that helps. And for those who are looking for, um, Two minute tips. Make sure that you that you this is the channel that you're on right now. But I also want to draw your attention to another uh, uh, channel that I have, Sharon Danley Advocacy. Uh, I've revived that. Given the current state of our world, I have been political most of my life, so um, I'm just uh, uh, I'm reviving that, and I put up my thoughts on that channel if you're interested. So with this one, please like, share, and subscribe. Remember, I do not get any benefit or make any money on this channel in any way, shape, or form. I don't sell products. I don't any of that stuff, and I will only recommend what I use. So I'm not, you know, trying to make money on the channel. The whole idea of the channel is if you've gotten something out of it, if you could pay it forward to somebody in need in your part of the world, um, you know, whether it's a person or a group, with your own time, talent, or treasure, that would be wonderful. And for those looking to have a make better to help them, you can come to the Going Gray and Loving It uh, closed page, or you can go to Sharon Danley Beauty. Now, for this week's quote, a classic timeless look always serves you well. What's on trend always serves the beauty industry well. So remember, it's not about the beauty industry. It's not about the propaganda. It's about you your healthy self-esteem, your healthy strength, your healthy sense of self, and your well-presented foot, face, and frock forward to the world. That will help you age beautifully, wonderfully. However you age, you're going to carry something wonderful with you. Thank you so much, ladies, for watching, and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Next week, next Friday, will be a video. Mwah!